Hey, Andrew here for Tech Reporter TV. Today with a review of the Huawei MateBook 12-inch Windows tablet that was introduced in spring on the Mobile World Congress. And in this review, we, we want to see if it is a good competitor to other two-in-one devices of this kind, like the Surface Pro 4 from Microsoft. You can get the MateBook in several versions with a Core M3, Core M5, 4 GB or 16 GB of RAM, and a 120 GB up to a 512 GB SSD. You can also get a keyboard cover with this. In some markets it's included, in others it's not. But you can also get a stylus, which is called the Mate Pen, and a kind of dongle, which is called the Mate Dock. So let's start our review with the design and the build quality. And I really like the design. It looks quite nice and it looks similar to other tablets from Huawei like the MediaPad M2 10.0 Pro. The front is completely white and the back, depending on the version, is like golden or silver. And everything is made of aluminium and that makes it feel very, very high end. You really have the feeling of having an expensive, very nice tablet in your hands. Not only because of the aluminium, but also because it's only 6.9 mm thin, which is quite thin for a Windows device like this. Above the display, there's a camera with a resolution of 5 megapixels, and under the display, there's the logo from Huawei. On the side, you have a power button and a volume rocker, and between those two volume buttons, there's a fingerprint reader. And it actually works the same like with the smartphones from Huawei. It works very nicely. I really like the fingerprint reader on the MateBook. There are not a lot of ports, which is kind of sad. We have an audio port, a USB Type-C port, which is nice, and the magnetic thing for the keyboard. There's no micro SD card slot, so that's something you have to consider. There's no micro SD card slot on the MateBook or any card slot of any kind. Let's get to the display. It's 12 inches and it's an IPS panel. And yeah, it has the same size like most tablets of this kind. The resolution is 2160 by 1440. So it's not as high as the resolution of the Surface Pro 4, but it's still a high resolution display. I quite like it. The brightness is very good, especially compared to little cheaper devices like the Acer Switch Alpha 12, which is a bit darker. The colors look nice on here. They are quite saturated and the viewing angles are good as well. So overall, I really think that the display of the MateBook is quite nice. On the touchscreen, you can not only use your fingers, but also the stylus, and that one is called Mate Pen. The pen has 2048 pressure points, so you can draw quite precisely in Photoshop or take notes in OneNote. And even the handwriting recognition that's built into Windows 10 works quite nicely. You can charge the Mate Pen with a micro USB port over a micro USB port. I only had to do it at the beginning of my review, so the battery life seems to be quite nice. There are two buttons on the downside of the Mate Pen, and that one you can use like for the right mouse, the right mouse button or a eraser or something. You can set it um, however you like. And there's a button at the top of the Mate Pen, and that one actually activates an integrated laser pointer. So that one can be a very useful feature if you're doing a lot of PowerPoint presentation. Overall, the Mate Pen is very nice. I really like what Huawei did with the Mate Pen. The only downside of the stylus has nothing to do with the stylus. Um, for example, I'm using a lot of Photoshop, even if it's just with a Wacom tablet on a normal notebook. And in Photoshop, I like to use the stylus. I like to use the stylus, but I also need to use the keyboard for keyboard shortcuts. But the problem is that if you have the MateBook inside the keyboard cover, you can't tilt the screen, the tablet, far away back. It's quite stiff and yeah, the angle is not very nice. If you're doing shortcuts and at the same time you're writing on the screen in Photoshop or you're drawing stuff, the, your hand gets tired quite easily. So I wish that you could tilt back the tablet a little bit more, but yeah, that's not possible. Inside the MateBook runs an Intel Core M3 or Core M5 processor, and you can get 4 GB or 8 GB of RAM. And the SSD has a capacity of 128 GB, 256 GB, or 512 GB. For most things, the Core M3 is really alright. You can use it quite nicely for most things. The same obviously goes for the Core M5 version as well. You can browse the web without any problems, uh, watch YouTube, have tabs open. Um, you can work in Photoshop quite nicely, but obviously if you have a lot of um, big files in Photoshop, you might find the 8GB RAM version quite useful. I especially recommend a Core M chip if you 
have to do a lot of office work if you're doing a lot of office work and you don't need that much performance but if you need a bit of performance it still works on the MateBook. like I could edit full HD videos and PowerDirector on this device so that works obviously. Like in your usual day, um, day to day work you probably won't notice any differences between a Core i chip and a Core M chip. Um, one difference is usually that you have active cooling with a Core i chip like there are fans running, the MateBook is completely silent. But you actually notice a performance difference if you really look at it. For example, I was running PowerDirector on the Huawei MateBook with the Core M3 and the Acer Switch Alpha 12 with the Core i5. I was running PowerDirector, editing a 22 minute long Full HD video and during the rendering the MateBook took over 10 minutes longer to render this 22 minute Full HD video than the Switch Alpha 12 with the Core i5. So there is a performance difference that you are noticing. What's quite interesting in case of PowerDirector is that if you are activating Intel QuickSync, the technology from Intel, then the rendering is exactly the same on point on the second. It's exactly the same. That's QuickSync. QuickSync, so then yeah, it usually um, makes the rendering a lot faster. Differences, you can also see the differences in benchmarks like Geekbench 3. The Huawei MateBook got 2700 points in the single core test and around 5400 points in the multi core test. And yeah, a Core i5 of this kind generally gets like 3000 points in the single core test and 6000 points in the multi core test. So there are a couple of accessories for the MateBook that you can get on one of them. One quite important one is the keyboard cover. Um, in Germany you can get it like it's included in the price but it's not everywhere so you have to check if you have to buy it extra. Um, you can put the tablet into the keyboard cover and then you can set it at two very similar angles. Um, the keyboard cover you can get it in different colors. It's like this fake leathery but it actually feels quite nice like it doesn't feel super cheap and yeah there I really like the keyboard cover kind of but there are two things that I don't like about it and the one thing is that you can only put the tablet into the keyboard in two very similar angles so you can you can't tilt the screen all the way back which is not that nice because on the Surface Pro 3 or the Surface Pro 4 or the Switch Alpha 12 you can tilt the tablet back quite quite a lot and that makes it easier to work. Another downside is that you can't angle the keyboard onto the tablet just a little bit like we have with this ma magnetic bar on the Surface Pro 4 but also on the Pro 3 and the Switch Alpha 12 and it's nice if you can angle the keyboard a bit it makes everything more stable if you're having it on your lap and it also is just more comfortable to write on. Besides that the keyboard is actually quite nice I could type on it quite easily and without any problems fluently. Let's get to the Mate dock which is not really a dock it's kind of an expanded dongle and um, there's an adapter cable from USB type C to micro USB included but if you need more ports then you really need the Mate dock or a similar accessory and with the Mate dock you get a lot of more ports um, like an Ethernet port, HDMI out, even VGA out, you get two big USB 3.0 ports. But what's really sad is that you don't get an SD card slot or a micro SD card slot. So if you want to transfer pictures from your camera onto your tablet, then you really need to buy another external SD card reader. You don't can't even use a micro SD card and that's really kind of a bummer. Together with the Mate Dock you get a nice like this fake leathery a nice case for it and it really looks nice like the build quality of the Mate Dock seems to be very good. Inside the MateBook is a battery with a capacity of 4430 milliamp hours and in my battery test that was enough for a battery life of 6 hours and 30 minutes which for a Windows tablet is not the best result but it's a quite solid result especially if you like see the 6.9 millimeter thin um, it's just 6.9 millimeter thin and there's not much room for a battery. Also the display is quite bright. For example on the Switch Alpha 12 I got about an hour longer but the display on that one is quite darker so that goes into account as well. I always do the same battery test on all my reviews. I'm running a full HD video, no it's an HD video over and over again 
the brightness is set to 50%, Wi-Fi is activated, the audio is deactivated and I also switched off this automatic brightness adjustment in the settings of Windows 10. So 6 hours and 30 minutes is an okay result. So overall my opinion of the Huawei MateBook has like two sides. I really like the build quality, like the build quality is awesome, it's probably one of the best tablets in terms of build quality. And the fingerprint reader is very nice as well, the stylus, I like the mate pen and the display and performance for COM3, it's totally fine. For most things the Huawei MateBook is very nice if you're using it as a Windows tablet. But if you want to replace a notebook, uh, maybe I would look for other options because doing my work I really did not like that I couldn't tilt the tablet back more than just two very similar angles. I think you should be able to tilt it back more, especially if you're working on a standing desk, if you have it on your lap. It's just more comfortable to adjust the angle of the display if you're using it in a notebook mode. So yeah, that's why I not really can recommend it as a notebook replacement. If you're just using it at home on a standard desk, then it's probably fine. But yeah, I really did not like that the angles couldn't be adjusted further down. So if you're looking for a very high-end Windows tablet with a nice build quality, the MateBook is very nice. But if you're looking for a notebook replacement, then I would look for other solutions. So that's my review of the Huawei MateBook. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. I'm NJ, thanks for watching.